Hey, what's up? This is Václav. 2024 is Home Assistant's Year of the Voice, but I think they should rather call it Year of the User Experience. See, last month they came up with the dashboard section layout. In April, a huge improvement in organizing, well, everything with a Home Assistant. Frankly, this is something I've been waiting for ever since I moved from keeping the configuration in the YAML files that I had neatly organized in different package files. Uh, and then I moved to Visual Editor. And it's actually even better than that, but I'll show you in a second. See, the Visual Editor is great, I like it, but it kind of keeps one long list of items. And if your home assistant is overgrown like mine, it takes an effort to find things. So I kept an eye on Frank's project for adding labels to things. But uh, he has been apparently fighting with different people, having different expectations, trying to find his way. See, uh, being able to add different labels to different things and then being able to filter those by those labels, it's like tags in most of the applications. And I suppose this works great for most IT people, but for general public, it's apparently too complicated. They wanted simple folders where they could uh, sort things, like the packages. And some even argued that the folder structure should be hardwired to floors that would be even simpler and will bring many other benefits. So I guess uh, they were a bit stuck in this discussion. But finally in April, it's finally coming. Now, what's coming? Which of the three flavors, you might ask? Well, all three of them. Let me show you. Let me start from the floors, because they are the simplest. The floors are logically linked to the areas, so a floor can be only assigned to an area. But the way it works is actually genius, because you can then filter or address all the devices or entities on a given floor in the same way you could do that in the area. And it will select all the entities in all the areas on that floor. So let me show you. If you go to settings, there is this uh, option to uh, go to areas and zones, and there is a new one for labels. I'm gonna get to labels later, but if you click on that, you are in the areas, and as you can see, they are now organized in those uh, floors. So there is one for outside, then I have one for ground floor, and then I have one for the first floor. And then I have few that I have unassigned, and if you want to add them to a new floor, I need to create a new floor, and I'll call it uh, attic and I can give it a level, so it's a level two. And then uh, there's gonna be an icon, so let's call it second floor. I can add alias and say add. And then once I'm here, I can go to this area settings and I can add it to this attic and say save. And when I go back, uh, you see there is a new floor now and the attic is there. So I have created sort of an artificial floor. It's not really a floor, but I created one for the outside. And then I have one for the ground floor. So these are the areas or rooms on the ground floor and the first floor. And then I have one for the attic. So these are floors. Next, the folders. Well, they're actually not called folders, they're called categories. So you can create different categories for automations, scripts and scenes. And they only live in that view, so uh, you don't see them anywhere else. You cannot use them to uh, call services or do other things. Their only purpose is to break the long list of automations, scenes and scripts to different categories. So let's see. So they are uh, for the automations and scenes. So I go to settings, automations and scenes, and you can see that I have them in those sections. So to be able to use those new floors or categories or labels, they have recreated the uh, list of the automation scenes, entities or devices. They call it table view. Uh, there is this new button for filters and I'm gonna get to this one in a second, but they're also allowed to group them by uh, different things, by the state or by the category or uh, I can disable grouping and then it shows me uh, one long list uh, which is similar to what we had there before. But by default, they are grouped by the category which gives me those nice sort of a sections of uh, different entities, in this case, automations. So I created one for alerts and then I have automated control, 
buttons and so on. Uh, if I would like to see them or, or filter them, I can open this uh, new menu filters and here I can open categories and uh, if I click on those, it'll filter the automations that are only in that category. So you can, as you can see that I created one for automations that uh, create alerts, that I have uh, one that react on those push buttons from IKEA, I have one for energy management, those ones controlling lights, and then I have some regular checks and so on. If I want to create a new category, I'll just click on this button, add a category, and then I can create new category, edit an icon, and then once I'm in the automation, I can then edit category and I can put it in a different category. A automation can be only one category, so I can just choose in which one it's uh, meant to be. Or I can remove it from all the categories and it then won't be in any of the categories. Hopefully there's gonna be a drag and drop uh, feature later on, but currently you have to go through those ellipsis menu and edit category. So these are categories. And finally, the most universal feature of the three, the labels. Unlike the two previous tools, labels can be added pretty much to anything. Devices, entities, automations, scripts, scenes. You can even add multiple labels to an object. And then you can call services for those labels or you can use them to filter things. Which brings me to a much improved table view with a great filter. Let me show you. So you already saw the new table layout in the automations and scenes. There is the same one for devices and for the entities. And they all share the same feature. There is this uh, filter uh, button. And from there, I can filter them by areas. But in here, you don't see only areas, but you could also see uh, the floors. So if I would uh, click on this uh, first floor, it will filter all the devices that are on the first floor. Or in here, I can uh, filter by individual uh, areas or, or rooms, but, but doing it this way, I can filter by floor. This is great. So these are the areas, so this is great. But you can also combine it with other things. You could uh, filter by integrations. You could filter by state. And you can filter by this new thing, which is labels. For the labels, let me go back to the automations. So in automations, you see those uh, little, well, really color labels I have in there. So as you can see, I already created some labels and I put them to different automations. And, and as you can see, some of them have multiple. And, uh, and you can create it by add a label and here you give it a name, you pick up an icon and you can pick different colors. So they're nice color, but you can actually, uh, it can have some meaning. And then what you do is you can filter by all the automations, in this case we see automations that have this label. So I have uh, some that uh, has something to do with a battery, that are some that uh, do something with my electric cars. And then if you watch my videos, you know that uh, I control the temperature in different rooms uh, based on presence. If people are home, it will uh, turn the heating up and so on. So logically, this is the one I could use or I could use temperature. And then I have the water leak sensors and I see all the alerts and checks. And uh, with a combination with those sections, you could see that I have two automations that are in the regular checks. So I'm checking every six months that the uh, water leak sensors are fine. And when I arrive at home, it will also uh, tell me if there was a problem. And there is the actual alerts if there is a water leak. I have one for dishwasher and one for a washing machine. So it's a very easy way of finding things out. And those labels, you can have them also for scenes, for scripts. Uh, they're using the same labels. So for the battery, I have some scripts, but I have also some automations. And the labels actually work across the whole OM Assistant. So if I would, for example, uh, in the entities, select the entities related to a car, you can see that there is one switch that is uh, labeled with this uh, car uh, label. So uh, what I could do is I can actually call a service switch turn on 
uh, as a target I have now those uh, four options so I can choose the entity so I can manually uh, configure it uh, from here so that's uh, one option and I can also do it by device so these were there previously I could also do area that was there before as well but now I can additionally do it by uh, floor not only by area so this is nice but I can also choose label so I can say I can uh, I would like to turn on all the switches that are labeled with the label card which gives me a great flexibility because uh, I can call a service turn on switch or turn on light uh, for a specific label and then I can add this label to different switches or lights and uh, I can control them this way I think it's sort of an alternative to uh, to scenes but perhaps a little bit more flexible a little bit more temporary if you will so this is great I love it very much and uh, I'll be looking forward to see where does it evolve because what I'm showing you here it's not even released uh, it's just a beta version it's gonna be released on Wednesday and we are on Monday so it's gonna evolve it's gonna improve so I'm really looking forward to it but there is more they also improved the section layout dashboard that was introduced last month so you can now configure the maximum number of columns in the section layout if you have a large display and there are now two new dashboards that are alternatives to the cards one for the map and then for the web page in fact there used to be a map dashboard previously but it didn't show in the dashboard section it was configured through configuration.yaml so if you were using that already like I did it'll be automatically smoothly migrated uh, to the new dashboard the other great addition is the new Olama integration currently uh, there is an integration to OpenAI and there is a great community add-on for the extended OpenAI integration and I think if I'm not mistaken this one supports both OpenAI and Olama and now you can have a local generative AI server and use it for home assistant you have to run it on some sort of server somewhere it won't run on your Raspberry Pi but you can run it locally I'm currently playing with the extended OpenAI integration so I will look at this one in the next video and I will hopefully compare the OpenAI maybe the Olama and I'll show you the extended OpenAI and then B did it again and he managed to further improve the performance the most uh, noticeable uh, improvement is on the startup time speaking of startup time let me add one extra tip if you go to system repairs under the ellipsis menu you can see the integration startup time so I suggest you check that out they might point to some problems with your configuration or sometimes you might be loading things you don't even need and then there are some more changes and improvements and uh, I'm only addressing the biggest ones so here they are you can check the uh, release notes uh, so I'll show you at least on the screen so another great release enjoy it and I'll see you in the next one bye